Hi, I'm Sue. Thanks for joining me for today's Bible reading for October 30th. And today I'm reading Luke 14 and 15 from the World English Bible. When he, Jesus, went into the house of one of the rulers of the Pharisees on a Sabbath to eat bread, they were watching him. Behold, a certain man who had dropsy was in front of him. Jesus answering spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? But they were silent. He took him and healed him and let him go. He answered them, Which of you, if your son or an ox fell into a well, wouldn't immediately pull him out on the Sabbath? They couldn't answer him regarding these things. He spoke a parable to those who were invited when he noticed how they chose the best seats and said to them, When you're invited by anyone to a wedding feast, don't sit in the best seat. Perhaps someone more honorable than you might be invited by him, and he who invited both of you would come and tell you, Make room for this person. Then you would begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you're invited, go and sit in the lowest place so that when he who invited you comes, he may tell you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. He also said to the one who had invited him, when you make a dinner or supper, don't call your friends, nor your brothers, nor your kinsmen, nor rich neighbors, or perhaps they might return the favor and pay you back. But when you make a feast, ask the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they don't have the resources to repay you, for you will be repaid in the resurrection of the righteous. When one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who will feast in God's kingdom. But he said to him, A certain man made a great supper, and he invited many people. He sent out his servant at supper time to tell those who were invited, Come, for everything is ready now. They all as one began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please have me excused. Another, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I must go try them out. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I can't come. That servant came and told the Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring the poor, the maimed, the blind, and the lame. The servant said, Lord, it's done as you commanded, and there is still room. The Lord said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you that none of these men who were invited will taste of my supper. Now great multitudes were going with him. He turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and doesn't disregard his own father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, and his own life, also he can't be my disciple. Whoever doesn't bear his own cross and come after me can't be my disciple. For which of you desiring to build a tower doesn't first sit down and count the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? Or perhaps when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, everyone who sees begins to mock him, saying, This man began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or what king, as he goes to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sends an envoy and asks for conditions of peace. So therefore, whoever of you who doesn't renounce all that he has, he can't be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt becomes flat and tasteless, with what do you season it? If it, it is fit, neither for the soil nor for the manure pile, it is thrown out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now the tax collectors and sinners were coming close to him to hear him. The Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. He told them this parable. Which of you men, if you had one hundred sheep and lost one of them, wouldn't leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that was lost until he found it? When he has found it, he carries it on his shoulders, rejoicing. When he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice for me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I tell you, that even so there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who need to re need no repentance. Or what woman, if she had 10 drachma coins, if she lost one drachma coin, wouldn't light a lamp, sweep the house, and seek diligently until she found it? When she has found it, she calls together friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the drachma which I had lost. Even so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner repenting. He said, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me my share of your property. So he divided his livelihood between them. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all of him, this together, and traveled into a far country. There he wasted his 
property with riotous living. When he had spent all of it, there arose a severe famine in that country, and he began to be in need. He went and joined himself to one of the citizens of that country and sent him in two fields to feed pigs. He wanted to fill his belly with the house that the pigs ate, but no one gave him any. But when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread to even enough to spare, and I'm dying with hunger. I will get up and go to my father and will tell him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. He arose and came to his father, but while he was still far off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf, kill it, and let's eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Then they began to celebrate. <clears throat> now his elder son was in a field. As he came near to the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants to him and asked him what was going on. He said to him, Your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and healthy. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and begged him. But he answered his father, Behold, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed a commandment of yours, but you never gave me a goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this your son came, who has devoured your living with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. He said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But it was appropriate to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. That's it for today's reading. Um, it, there is... There are footnotes here, and it says um, a drachma was worth about two days' wages for an agricultural laborer. Just FYI, in case you were wondering. Um, be sure to check the comments and the description for some helpful links and information. There is an email address if you would like a free one-year Bible. And that's it for today. Join me tomorrow. Shalom.